Hello friends, you are welcome and thank you very much to all of you. In this section we will get to know the great saint and devotee Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It is our good fortune that we are getting to know them. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a 15th century Indian saint who is considered to be the combined avatar of Radha and Krishna by his disciples and various scriptures. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mode of worshipping Krishna with ecstatic song and dance had a profound effect on Vaishnavism in Bengal. He was also the chief proponent of the Vedantic philosophy of Achintya Bhedar Abda Tattwa Chaitanya founded Gaudiya Vaishnavism, which is a religious movement that promotes Vaishnavism or worship of Lord Vishnu as the Supreme Soul. Gaudiya Vaishnavism teaches the acceptance of Bhakti Yoga as a method to realize the ultimate truth. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is credited with popularizing the Maha Mantra or Hare Krishna Mantra. He is also known for composing in Sanskrit a prayer of eight verses, known as Sikhsastikam. Said to have been born with features similar to that of Lord Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a child prodigy and became a scholar at a very young age. He even opened a school and had thousands of followers very early in his life. Though not much about his sudden and mysterious disappearance or demise is known, a few scholars and researchers believe that he might have died of epilepsy. He composed the Shikshesh Tekam, Eight Devotional Prayers. Childhood and early life Chaitanya was born Vishwambhar on February 18, 1486. At the time of his birth, India witnessed a full lunar eclipse, which was considered auspicious by Hindu scholars. Chaitanya means, one who is conscious, derived from Chaitana, which means, consciousness, Maha means, great, and Prabhu means, Lord, or, Master. Chaitanya was born as Vishwambhar Mishra, the second son of Jagannath Mishra. Jagannath and his wife, Sachi Devi, the daughter of Nilambra Chakravarti, were both Brahmins of Silet. Jagannath Mishra's family were from the village of Dhakadakshin in Srihatta, Silet, and later migrated to Nabdwip. The ruins of their ancestral home still survive in present-day Bangladesh. Many sources state that Chaitanya was born with a fair skin and had striking similarities with the conceived image of Lord Krishna. As a young boy, Chaitanya started chanting praises of Lord Krishna and also exhibited unusually high level of intelligence. He could recite mantras and other religious hymns at a very young age, and had gradually started spreading knowledge much like a scholar. When he was 16 years old, Chaitanya started his own school, which attracted many pupils. Chaitanya's knowledge and wisdom was so great that he once defeated a proud and learned scholar named Keshava Kashmiri in a debate. The next day Keshava Kashmiri is said to have surrendered before Chaitanya, accepting his defeat gladly. According to various sources, Keshava Kashmiri dreamt of Goddess Saraswati on the night after the debate. When Goddess Saraswati explained to him who Chaitanya actually was, Keshava Kashmiri realized the truth and accepted defeat the next morning. A number of stories also exist telling of Chaitanya's apparent attraction to the chanting and singing of Krishna's names from a very young age, but largely this was perceived as being secondary to his interest in acquiring knowledge and studying Sanskrit. When traveling to Gaya to perform the Shraddha ceremony for his departed father, Chaitanya met his guru, the ascetic Ishwar Puri, from whom he received initiation with the Gopala Krishna Mantra. This meeting was to mark a significant change in Chaitanya's outlook and upon his return to Bengal the local Vavishnavas, headed by Advaita Acharya, were stunned at his external sudden change of heart, from scholar to devotee, and soon Chaitanya became the eminent leader of their Vavishnava group within Nadia. After leaving Bengal and receiving entrance into the sannyasa order by Swami Kasavar Bharti, Chaitanya journeyed throughout the length and breadth of India for several years, chanting the divine names of Krishna constantly. At that time he travelled on foot covering a lot of places like Baranagar, Mahinagar, Atisara and, at last, Chhatrabhog. 
Chhatra Bhog is the place where goddess Ganga and Shiva met, then 100 mouths of Ganga were visible from here. From the source of Vrindavana Dasa's Chaitanya Bhagavata, he bathed at Ambulinga Ghat of Chhatra Bhog with intimate companions with great chorus chanting, Kirtan. After staying one night he set for Puri by boat with the help of local administrator Ram Chandra Khan. He spent the last 24 years of his life in Puri, Odisha, the great temple city of Jagannath in the Radhakanta Math. The Gajapati king, Pratapurudra Dev, regarded Chaitanya as Krishna's avatar and was an enthusiastic patron and devotee of Chaitanya's recitation, Sankirtan, gatherings. It was during these years that Chaitanya is believed by his followers to have sunk deep into various divine love trances, samadhi, and performed pastimes of divine ecstasy, bhakti. Vrindavan, the land of Radha Rani, the city of temples, has more than 5,000 temples to showcase the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. The essence of Vrindavan was lost over time until the 16th century, when it was rediscovered by Chaitanya. In the year 1515, Chaitanya visited Vrindavan, with the purpose of locating the lost holy places associated with Krishna's transcendent pastimes. He wandered through the different sacred forests of Vrindavan in a spiritual trance of divine love. It was believed that by his divine spiritual power, he was able to locate all the important places of Krishna's pastimes in and around Vrindavan including the seven main temples or Sapta Devale, which are worshipped by Vavishnavas in the Chaitanya tradition to this day. Chaitanya meets his Guru Ishwar Puri, after the death of his father, Jagannath Mishra, Chaitanya we went the ancient city of Gaya to perform a religious ceremony to pay homage to his deceased father. While in Gaya, he met an ascetic named Ishwar Puri, who would go on to become Chaitanya's guru. When Chaitanya returned to his hometown, there was a significant change in his thought process. He was followed by the local Vavishnavas of Bengal and it did not take him long before heading one of the Vavishnava groups in Nadia district. Thereafter, he decided to leave Bengal and requested Keshavar Bharti to bestow upon him, sannyasa, which requires one to renounce all things material and wander in search of the ultimate truth. While ascetics, sannyasi, follow various methods to attain salvation, Chaitanya's key to unlock the ultimate truth was Bhakti Yoga, which is one's loving devotion towards the Supreme Being. By chanting Lord Krishna's name relentlessly, Chaitanya not only practiced Bhakti Yoga, but also taught his followers the proper method of pursuing Bhakti Yoga. The tour for many years, Chaitanya traveled the length and breadth of India, advocating Bhakti Yoga. Chanting the name of Krishna, Chaitanya would travel on foot to various places in a state of absolute bliss or ecstasy. In 1515, Chaitanya visited Vrindavan, believed to be the birthplace of Lord Krishna. The main objective of Chaitanya's visit was later said to be reinvention, as Chaitanya wanted to identify important places associated with Lord Krishna in Vrindavan. It is said that Chaitanya was successful in locating all the important places, including the seven temples, Sapta Devale, which are visited by Vavishnavas even today. After travelling for years, Chaitanya settled down in Puri, Odisha, where he stayed for the final 24 years of his life. Chaitanya was revered as Krishna himself not just by his ardent devotees and followers, but also by several rulers of the 16th century. Pratapurudra Dev, a Gajapati ruler, became one of his most enthusiastic patrons and a devotee of his Sankirtan gatherings. Teachings a number of stories also exist telling of Chaitanya's apparent attraction to the chanting and singing of Krishna's names from a very young age. Sikhsastakam, a 16th century prayer of eight verses, is the only written record of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings. The teachings and philosophy of Gaudiya Vaishnavism are based on this Sanskrit language. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings are divided into ten points and are based on the glorification of Lord Krishna. 
Here are the 10 teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Krishna is the absolute truth. The first point states that Krishna, who is an avatar of Lord Vishnu, is the supreme being. This philosophy of Gaudiya Vaishnavism is similar to that of Vaishnavism, which considers Lord Vishnu as the supreme being. Krishna possesses all energies, like the first point, this too glorifies Lord Krishna. According to this philosophy, Lord Krishna is endowed with all the required energies to run the universe. Lord Krishna is the source of everything, this states that Lord Krishna is the one who ultimately enjoys all the spiritual joy and emotions. It also states that Krishna enjoys the ultimate rasa, which refers to the creation of a distinct flavor. Atman, soul, is a part of the Lord, this is the basic philosophy of Hinduism, which states that all souls are a part of the Supreme Soul. This concept is same as the concept of Atman being a part of Paramatman. Souls are influenced by matter in physical form. This teaching states that souls are influenced by matter when they are in physical form. This is attributed to the Tatistha, nature of the soul. Souls are not influenced by matter in liberated state, once again attributed to the Tatistha, nature of the soul. This teaching states that souls are free from the influence of matter when they are not in physical form. The Atman is different and identical to the Paramatman. This states that the souls and the material world are different yet identical to the Lord or the Supreme Being. According to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings, the Supreme Being is Lord Krishna. Atman practices pure devotion. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu advocated Bhakti Yoga and taught that pure devotion is one of the ways to attain liberation. According to Gaudiya Vaishnavism, liberation is the unification of Atman into Paramatman. Attaining Krishna's love is the ultimate goal. This teaches how one can realize the true love of Lord Krishna through various means of yoga, especially Bhakti Yoga, which involves the chanting of the Lord's name. Lord Krishna is the only blessing to be received. The tenth and the final point in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings indicate that everyone should strive towards realizing the ultimate truth, which is acceptance of the fact that Krishna is the only blessing to be received. Main Philosophy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Though initiated into the Madhvacharya tradition, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's philosophy is considered slightly different from that of other followers and teachers of Madhvacharya tradition. According to historians and scholars, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not pen down any written text. However, his words were recorded by one of his followers, which came to be known as Sikhsastaka, eight verses. These eight verses are believed to house the philosophy of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. Though Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not write down his teachings and philosophy, he did request a few of his followers, six Goswamas of Vrindavan, to systematically present his teachings in their own writings. Death and legacy Though the followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu claim that he did not die as he was an incarnation of Lord Krishna, many theories suggest that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could have been murdered for various reasons. However, this is a controversial theory and is not supported by all. Another mysterious theory suggests that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu disappeared magically, while another account states that he died at Tota Gopinath Temple in Puri, Odisha. However, scholars and historians say that there are enough evidences to state that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu suffered from epilepsy. Various texts state that he would lose his consciousness at regular intervals due to the disease. Historians also suggest that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu suffered from seizures and that epilepsy might have caused his death on June 14, 1534. Dear audiences, we want your support to grow our channel. Without your kind support we are nothing. Please do like, subscribe, share and comment. Thanks a lot.